Hi there, this is Mike from the Excel Trainer. Working with dates in Excel can be a bit of a nightmare. So in this video, I'm going to show you how Excel handles dates with three specific scenarios. In the first scenario, we'll look at how Excel recognizes and handles dates at a basic level. In the second scenario, I'll show you how to calculate how many days there are between the current date and Christmas. Although it doesn't have to be Christmas, it's basically the difference between two dates. And the third demo will cover how to convert a date into a day name for summary purposes. So let's get started. In Excel, the simplest way to enter a date into a cell is just to type it in. As long as you enter it in using a format that Excel recognizes, it will be treated as a date. So for example, in A1, I'm going to type 06 slash 02 slash 2022. Because my computer's regional settings are configured to UK, Excel treats what I've entered as the 6th of February 2022. If I go to the number section on the home tab of the ribbon, click the drop down arrow and select long date, it changes the format to display the 6th, the full name of the month, 2022. I can also change the format of A1 to a custom format. Click the drop down arrow, select more number formats, click on custom, and in the box just above the scroll list, type in the format that I want to use. In this case, I'm going to type four Y's, then a dash, and then three M's, and a dash, and two D's. It's not case sensitive. So that gives me the full year, the first three characters of the month name and the day number. Click on OK. And now I get the 6th of February 2022 in that format. Now, if I click the drop down arrow in the number section and click General, I get a number. But what is 44,598? What does it represent? Well, in Excel, a date is actually a numeric value. It's known as a serial number. And the number represents the number of days since the 1st of January 1900, which is the first day that Excel recognises. Knowing that behind the scenes a date is a number helps you understand how Excel calculates dates. And sometimes calculations involving dates display the result as a serial number. So unless you understand the correlation between dates and numbers, you might think that you've done something wrong. In the second demo, I want to calculate how many days there are until Christmas. Of course, I could put any date into B2, but I'm just using Christmas as an example. I want B1 to automatically update every day. And for that to happen, I'd either have to type in the current date each day into B1 or use a special function which is linked to my computer's internal clock. And that special function is the today function. So I type equals today, open bracket, close bracket, and press enter. And it's treating that as a date. Today, the day I'm recording this is the 16th of January, 2022. So it's put that date into B1. I can change the appearance of that cell, which I think I'll do so that it's consistent with B2. I'll make that long date as well. And then to do the calculation, to calculate how many days there are till Christmas, it's really the number of days between those two dates. So it would be B2 minus B1. Now I'd like to make it more generic so that it can be used for any year without typing the date in. So I'll just delete the Christmas Day date. To do this, I'll use the date function, which lets me create a date from three values or three cells, one containing the year, one containing the month number, and one containing the day number. So in B2, I'll put equals date open bracket, and to calculate the year, it will be the year from today. So I can use the year function and then wrap inside that the today function that I showed you 
a minute ago. So that's going to calculate or that's going to extract the year from today's date. Then I put a comma. The comma is used to separate the parameters. The month, well, if it's Christmas Day, it's always going to be 12, comma, and the day is always going to be 25. If this was next year, 2023, then it would show me the 25th of December, 2023, automatically without me having to do anything. The final demo I want to show you is how you can convert a list of dates into day names. Here's a list of matches played by Manchester United in 2019. This, of course, doesn't have to be soccer data. It can be any data with dates in it. Sales data, financial data, HR data. I want to know how many matches were played on a Monday, how many matches were played on a Tuesday, and so on. Now, one way to do that is to select the days with the dates in and apply a custom format to those cells. And the format I'm going to put is 4Ds, which will give me the full day name. Unfortunately, that's not going to work in this scenario because to calculate the number of matches per day, I need to have a list of days and then a count. And the quickest way to do that is to create a pivot table. But although it appears to have day names in column A, behind the scenes, I've still got real dates. So I'm going to undo that. And what I'm going to do is add a new column in column H, which will have the names of the days. Now, before I do that, the data is stored in a proper Excel table. We can tell that because we have the table design tab there. And if I click on it, the name of the table is TBL matches. So if I type the word day as a heading into H1, column H automatically becomes part of the table. And then I can go to H2 and type in a formula to calculate the day name from the date. And that formula will be equals text, open brackets, select A2. And because column A is part of the table, it doesn't put A2 in the formula. It puts the column name in, then a comma, and then in double quotes, four Ds. The text function converts a value, in this case, a date, into text. And the second parameter defines the format of that text. So if I press enter, it will give me all the way down column H because column H is part of the table. It will give me whatever date is in A2 displayed as a textual day name. Then all I need to do is create a pivot table from this data. So click on insert pivot table, select where I want the pivot table to go and drag in day into rows and then pick any column heading as long as it's got no blanks to put into values. I'll drag date. Any will do, as I say. And now I get a list of the day names and the number of matches that have been played on each day. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. But until the next time, take care and stay safe.